Lord, we just thank you for the worship, God. We thank you for your presence showing up in this place, Lord. Um, I ask that you take over this service, God, that uh, your will be done, Lord, and that um, we just thank you for every single person that showed up today, God, because you have something special just for them, Lord. I ask that you bless this offering. Please bless it to Broken Chains Church, God, and bless the hands that are giving, and please bless the hands that are unable to give this evening, but that want to so badly. Um, we just lift you up, God, and we praise your holy name, and we pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm not on your side, so don't get her too crappy. Yeah. Don't forget me. Gordon's <laughs> over there eager to take your guys' money. Put it in her pot. As we get settled in, um, around the church there are little ticket, um, movie tickets for you. I'm going to show you a trailer to a movie that we're bringing here October 7th. It's called Holy Ghost. And it's a documentary. And so the, I just invite you to take a ticket. Obviously, the movie's free for everybody, but take a ticket to invite a friend, okay? And the movie isn't about any kind of uh, dramatic uh, healings or miracles. It's about just the very fact that the Holy Ghost lives in every believer, and he's on this earth, and he leads and guides us. And so this guy that makes these documentaries said, let's just turn on the camera and let the Holy Ghost make a movie. So that's what he did. So I'm excited to bring that. We're one of 700 churches in the world to host one. And so I'm excited. I've only watched it like five times. <laughs> I won't tell you how it ends or anything. They've already planned the sequel called Holy Ghost Reborn, which, wow, I'm, I'm like even more excited for that one because they give you a teaser at the end during the credits. It's like, what? So I'm so excited. So I encourage you, so uh, as you watch the trailer, I'm going to show you a few different trailers over the next month because it's only in four weeks. And so, yay! <laughs> it's a gift from the Father. And if you ask for bread, He won't give you a stone. Filming, uh, filming a, a Christian documentary. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, about uh, about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. All over the earth. Hey, listen, guys. Before you go, before you go up in there, like, listen, <laughs> listen. Bro, me, Brian, and Fieldy, and me. We want to pray for you right now as you're going through, regardless of what you believe. Okay. Never been the same since. And I, you know, since I asked Jesus into my heart and my life, I've never been the same. I hope that today, speaking generally, there's been a silent divorce in the church between the Word and the Spirit. Walking with Jesus, filled by the Holy Spirit, is so much better than anything you could do for God. You know, any work, any art, I mean, because you become the art, you become the work. It's one of my biggest prayers, two prayers, not to ever be offended by anybody ever again the rest of my life, and to be the perfect God to the Holy Spirit wants to do.
Yeah. So, all right. I've been checking out all the trailers. Oh, Speaking of how the Holy Ghost leads, at the beginning of the year, I've been feeling moved to do some kind of something with the testimony tree, and it never came to fruition. Because the one I saw, it was like one of those little ones at like this craft store, and it has the lights, but they're like really expensive. So it never happened. Reva came in with a tree, and I'm just going to let her tell you about it. And uh, this is a hope tree, and what we... What uh, is going to go on is we're going to, like maybe you might know somebody that needs prayer, maybe loose from an addiction, or maybe your neighbor uh, has a hurt foot or something, and you put uh, the date on it, pin it on to one of the branches, and when that prayer gets answered, it'll be a testimony, and you can write the date on in, but each of these leaves are several notes in here and it'd be a testimony but this tree was blessed to our church <laughs> it was a true gift from god no money was involved in any of it and i was sitting there i got it um out of the dumpster <laughs> actually and i uh, was sitting in the living room and i'm like okay you know what am i going to do with the with it i don't know and i'm doing different crafts and just bam so I got my felt out and I wrote, Jesus is hope. And put it on there and I knew it was to come to church tonight and I got one of my little baskets down. There's ink pins in here, paper, and stick pens. So this is going to be our hope tree. Yay! Thank you, God. And, um, she mentioned that she wanted lights on it and I'm going down one day this week and I'm going to put... Uh, Bring in a strand of light, so we'll have our hope lighted tree. Yay! Light, light, light. light. That's right. And uh, I figured it gives everybody a chance if you're going through something too, and maybe you need a little of that hope. And when the Lord answers your prayers, it'll lift you up as well as whomever. Awesome! Yay! So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's good. See, I, I've been learning to trust God more and more to where how we try to force things to happen and take my hands off and go okay God when it just doesn't feel right or it's just not you, you, the provision's just not there and you, you're tempted to make it happen and God says why would you do that when I've already got a plan you know and so it's so awesome I'm learning patience love is patient that's the first one right yeah you get that the rest will follow so as I'm learning love is patient I'm better able to become kind and all that stuff. So that's awesome. God is good that way. Could all I right. say one more thing? Sure. Um, last week when we were asked about helping out around, maybe at the shop or coffee maker or anything, I was like, I really wanted to, but I've been having some tight funds, you know, and it's been on my heart, you know, and it's like, well, you know, I really don't have extra gas. So today as I was coming, I checked my mail, Here's a letter to me, no return address, and I thought it was maybe my baby sister because it looked like her writing, but I don't know. I open it up and there's a piece of paper wrapped around money. So I have gas. I'm available to work in a store or, you know, it was just like, oh God, because my phone was going to go off on the 15th. I done warned my mother. I'm like, oh, the phone's not going to be on because I call her every day. Now the phone's going to be on, and I'll be able to come and help do stuff, you know, and it was like, it never happened to me before, and I know it was, oh, God, my friend offered me $20 on Friday, and I said, if you feel like blessing me, okay. I said, but God will provide, you know, he always does, and then, then I checked my mail on my way here, so. But share about the seed that you sow. Oh. Because that may seem like nothing, but. Well, what I do is. When I dumpster dive, I, if I find money, I always bring it here and put it in uh, oh, okay. the basket, okay? And so you sow to seed. Yeah, I mean, Absolutely. We're, you know, I just put it, give it back because God gave it to me. I'm giving it back, right. you know. And so anyway, and I have no earthly idea who sent it. And I said, Lord's going to really bless them, too. That's awesome. You know, it was just amazing. Yeah. And that all the tree and all that happened today, this morning. 
the tree. And God goes, bam, you know, do this. Okay, God. <laughs> yeah, when you give when you don't know there's anything coming, that's when that something's coming. Yeah. When we hold on to what we don't have enough of because we're in fear, that doesn't turn into anything. Right. And so she sews and she finds change or whatever and instantly sews that. It's not enough to pay your phone bill. But when you sew it, God magically causes much more to show up in the in the in the mailbox. That's just you can't outgive God. Like this this really is the spiritual truth. Like we can't yeah. can't help it. Right. right? So praise God for that. So I added to the change tonight. Thank you, God. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to start the night with a poem, but then we're going to end with a different poem. So fill your poems at the end, okay? All right, so I have, last week I had passed out some scriptures for some people, and then I forgot to have you read them. And so um, this week they're going to help me with this poem that we're going to start out with. So I got this girl, oh, yeah, or you can put the picture of the girl in the, in the pot hole or whatever in the, there. All right, so here's this little poem. It's got five short parts to it. Okay, so listen up and see if this, um, if you can relate to this in any way. Okay, number one. I walk down the street, there's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in, I'm lost, I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Number two, nice and loud. I walk down the same street, there's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it, I fall in again. I can't believe I am in the same place, but it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it is there. I still fall in. It's a habit. But my eyes op are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Robbie, you don't have to keep up with us. Okay. <laughs> no, I think the girl in the pit was fine. Thanks. Number four. <clears throat> I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Number five. I walk down another street. All right. We're going to go through those in case you didn't pick up on it. Okay? person walks down the street and they fall in a hole. Oh, my gosh, I'm in a hole. But then they keep walking down the street and keep falling in the same hole. And so does that sound like anybody in here? <laughs> okay. So this is actually something from a book called There's a Hole in My Sidewalk. And, um, and as and I was bringing this up, this was something I had from a long time ago. And the Lord started to reveal some things to me that, first of all, the world of psychology doesn't have anything that hasn't come from Scripture. So they think they come up with this stuff. But, so I put Scripture to this to show you that the Lord really has a solution for you. Sidewalk fallers. Okay? All right. So, that first, first stage of this person. I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Right? It's not my fault. Well, you know, that could represent things that happen to us. Things that get put on us. You know, it's not my fault that I'm unforgiving. It's not my fault. Right? People weren't forgiving of me. Or whatever excuse you give for the patterns of behavior that you have that you wished you didn't have. Okay? And so, go to the next one there, Rob. So, in this very first part, God showed me Proverbs 4.19. It says, The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Without the Lord without being reborn in Christ. We are walking in darkness and we keep falling into the hole. We trip, we stumble, and we have no clue where we're going, right? That's the person who's lost and has no clue, right? So we're from darkness to light. We're not in that anymore, right? All right? So then the next one said, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. See, once you've heard the truth and you continue to not be changed by it, you're ignoring the truth. 
And so he says, I've fallen again. I can't believe I'm in the same place, but it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. I was talking to a friend today who, um, who, who has a struggle with, with her daughter who just finally got out of a really, really bad, like really seriously abusive marriage. But now has found herself in a relationship with someone who she started the relationship while she was still married. And now this guy is married and she's divorced and they're still in a relationship. And she doesn't understand why life isn't getting any better. And so I said, you know, that's a lot like this. Number one was her marriage and her abuse and, uh, and drug abuse and everything that was going on. And she fell in the sidewalk in this hole and she couldn't get out. And then she finally got out. But now that she's out, she's walking down the same sidewalk and falls into the same hole again. I'm like, man, that's just like that. But, but she's offended when you tell her, hey, this extramarital relationship isn't, isn't right. So she goes storming out. Doesn't want to hear the truth. Maybe that's where somebody's at in here. You know, the Word of God, God's plan for your life is plain and simple. His ways are very clear, and you just don't want to hear it because it's ruining your plan. But your plan isn't working either because you land in a hole, and it's hard to get out. But you're not willing to say, it's my fault. So then the third one. Oh, sorry, for that scripture then. So for that one, God showed me John 11. And Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. So light and day, you've got two options, right? Picture a clock. People who choose to walk in the darkness and still say, It's not my fault I stumbled. Well, yeah, you've chosen that. Now you know there's daytime. There's 12 hours of day, and there's 12 hours of night. And when you choose to walk in the night, don't be shocked when you run into a wall. And don't say it's not your fault, because you knew that there was a light, you could be walking in the light, in which God would reveal to you those things. So that's that person who knows better. That's, that's a dangerous place to be, because you are accountable, right? So it's like, oh, it's, if you're always saying it's not my fault, if those words come out of your mouth a lot, eh, you're choosing which time to walk in. Where the, you could see that hole in the sidewalk and avoid it. The third one when he says, I walk down the same street, there is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. It's a habit. But my eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Okay, so now you get tripped up, but you, you repent real quick, okay? But you still fell in. So the scripture the Lord gave me was a story about Saul, the apostle. And when Saul thought what he was doing was right, he was a Jewish religious leader. who did every, He was the leader of all leaders. He was the preacher, pastor of all pastors, right? And he was taking care of these awful people who were part of, quote, the way, these new Christians, these people that were Jesus followers. And so he was taking care of these people that were rebelling against God by killing them or imprisoning them, not realizing he was on the wrong side. You had the choice of darkness and light, nighttime or daytime, and he was choosing to walk blinded. He had not yet turned the light on. And so uh, in the book of Acts, he's, this is... Um, Ananias, I think, talking to him. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. This is that moment where finally you see. Okay, so when it says, at least my eyes are open now. How many of you can admit, wow, God's starting to show me some things that I actually didn't know were there. The reason for my stumbling, the things that keep entangling me, I'm starting to get some light on the situation. Okay, so Saul, who thought he was doing right, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, he's on his way, and he gets knocked off his high horse in the bright light, right? And Jesus is like, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he says, who is it, Lord? He says, I'm Jesus, the one that you think, 
you know, that you're, you're persecuting. And he pretty much says, you're on the wrong team. And so Saul now has a choice. This happens to more believers than you think, where you have a day, a time, a season with the Lord. He says, this is what I've got for you, or you can stay down in this. And you know what people do? They stay down in that. Even though what God has is so much better. You know? It's almost like the whole crossroads thing. Tonight we're talking about roads. It's almost like that crossroads thing. So Saul had this choice. God literally blinded him, okay, for three days. And so this is a really good illustration of this phase in our walk. When God then shows you something, and he takes the scales off your eyes, then what will you do? Then what road will you walk on? Okay? The fourth one, I walk down the same street, there's a deep hole in the sidewalk, I walk around it. A lot of people go, yay, complete victory. Not really. Not really, because that hole is still there. Some of us have not so far run from the old life we were in, even though God says we're made new, we still, if this is the narrow road, and this is the wide road, we're still right here. Aren't we? Yeah, we're not falling in the hole anymore. We're walking around it. Okay? For this scripture, I look at 2 Peter. He said, For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Jesus Christ. We're talking about good fruit. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. The person who keeps falling or tempting or going close to those things and not completely running away from them, you kind of, you've forgotten how much God has cleansed you from. You wouldn't entertain that stuff. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not only are we to walk around those things that cause us to stumble and pursue those things that draw us close to God. The last one, I walk down another street. Doesn't that sound so much easier? Yeah. Doesn't that sound easier? Just to walk down a different street, you're not that person anymore. There's not anything left of you, of your past, of the, of the junk that he's cleansed you from. Why would you even be on the same street where there's the hole that you used to fall in? Why would you even walk down that street? You don't live there anymore. For that scripture, I was in Colossians. I wanted to put the whole book of Colossians on there. So I reduced it. I mean, you don't realize how much I've chopped out of this. That's why I forgot where I was in, in the Paul story because I I had like 15 slides. I'm like, oh, I can't do that. We'll get lost. Alright, so in Colossians 1, the condensed version of this, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people, who live in the light. For he has rescued us. Oh, this is so good. He has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. Rescue. What's it mean if you rescue? Save. Save. <laughs> right? And transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has taken you from one place and put you somewhere else. Wow. Who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. He purchased it. Remember, he didn't just choose one day, I'm no longer going to hold you sin against you. Remember? In order to forgive our sin, sin had to be paid for. He said, not only will I forgive you, I will actually take the payment so that I can forgive you. That's nuts. 
Why would we be walking down the same road? Why would we even be anywhere in the old neighborhood where we lived in darkness? Why would we still live there? You know why gangsters can't get out of the gangs? Because they still live in that neighborhood. How about if you take one of them, stick them out in Iowa in the cornfields, and give them a house and a new life? Guess what? They're out of the gang. That's not who they are anymore. They are completely someone else. Jesus did that for us. And yet we still go. <laughs> Why did I hit the wall again? Why did I fall in the hole again? Because you're not supposed to be over there. Not in your mind. Not in your thinking patterns. Not in your relationships. Not in your pursuit of the Lord. Those old things, they're gone. He transferred. He rescued you out of darkness and transferred. He didn't just pull you out of darkness and leave you on the side of the road. Like when you get out of jail and they drop you off at the courthouse off the bus. Half of you know what I'm talking about, right? And you're like, I have $2 and nowhere to go. That's not what Jesus did when he rescued us. He took us out of the jail and then put us into where? His kingdom. Da 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 da! Oh my goodness, that's good. <laughs> Colossians 3. See, I jumped all the way to the third chapter already. <laughs> Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Realities of heaven. See, we think heaven and all that is like abstract, <coughs> conceptual, uh, it's for the future, but this is reality. God's like, you got it all backwards. This is temporary, and most of it's a lie. Right? What we see is a lie. But heaven is actually the real thing, right? The fullness of Christ is actually the real thing, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ and God. That's your real life. As sons of God, that's our real life, right? That, uh, that over in the hood where we were in the darkness, falling in the same hole, thinking victory is walking around the hole? No! You're still walking down the wrong road, right? Just not sinning is not victory. We're supposed to be living in the fullness of Christ. Like, there's, we're supposed to be living it and, bringing other, and, and going back and rescuing other people, not just avoiding the hole, Amen. right? All right, we got one person. And then in verse 5, so put to death. Ooh, that's strong words. Put to death. The sinful earthly things lurking within you. Lurking means you're still on that road, avoiding the pothole. That's lurking. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. Yeah. But now it's time to get rid of not only that stuff, because that's not even going to be a part of your thought process anymore. And to add to that, it's time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Just to put some icing on the cake. Right? <laughs> that takes the renewing of our mind. But that other stuff shouldn't even be in our thought process anymore. We're not that person. Jesus chose to live in us. Like, he moved in. Why would we entertain those things? So since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy. So if we know what not to put on, the, a reminder of what we've learned to put on this year. Tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. So, it sounds like a pretty amazing contrast. So, it's not enough to continue to stumble. Your life in Christ should look nothing like your life before Christ. If it looks the same, I have to ask you to evaluate is Christ really living in you? 
Did you just sign a card at a church somewhere and go, okay, I accept Jesus? Or did you actually put to death the old person, ask him to live in you, and then be raised in Christ? Because if you really then became born again and were adopted into his kingdom as sons, Jesus said, your father and my father are the same. We're brothers from a different mother, right? But we have the same father. That's pretty amazing. Like, so we are equal sons with Christ to our father. As much as God loves Jesus, he loves us. Guess what? The same spirit that was in Jesus is in us. What are we doing with it? We're still walking in our old ways going, oh, I can't help it. It's who I am. No, it's not. That's who you used to be. But someone came and rescued you, paid the price, hauled your butt out of there, and put you in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Start acting like a king's kid. Stop giving an excuse for living in the ghetto. Right? Yeah. All right. So it brought to mind the scripture about the narrow gate in Matthew 7. Right? <laughs> And I love that picture, because look at the things that we're supposed to have left aside. Coveting, idolatry, lying, lust, vanity, pride, greed. But what are we supposed to then be walking in? Faith, humility, truth, love, and obedience. Right? Enter by the narrow gate. For the gate, for, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. In the message version, or it was a New Living Translation, it said, Wide is the gate that leads, what was it? The gate of hell. The, no, what was it? The highway to hell in the message version. Called it the highway to hell. You got the narrow way and then you got the highway to hell. Does that maybe clarify it for somebody? And there are many who go in by it. Thank you, because I can't read those little letters. Oh, yeah, thank you. New Living says you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. I can guarantee you there's no potholes in that one. <laughs> there are no potholes in that one. Because he rescued you from that dark road that you couldn't see where you were going, and where you, you know, there was a lot of blame, and there was a lot of ugly, and he just transferred you to a different kingdom. Witness protection. You are somebody new. You can't even claim to be that old person. You can't even you can't even visit your past because it no longer exists. It's been wiped out. Like an adoption birth certificate. The original father has been wiped out in an adoption. The new father is listed as the father as if he always was. And so when you're born into the kingdom of heaven, you've been refathered. And he's your daddy. So act like it. All right? All right. And so in Matthew 7, right after this narrow road, he talks about the tree and its fruit. And he says, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. He's talking about contrast here. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Which road are you walking on? If your life is filled with pitfalls and stumbling, and the same old, same old, same old as before Christ, maybe perhaps you've wandered back to the ghetto that Christ already pulled you out of. What does your fruit say about you? It's very clear. And this isn't even as harsh as 1 John. And the last bit of Matthew 7. Not everyone who calls out, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On Judgment Day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. And we've talked over and over, keeping his laws doesn't get you into heaven. It's his grace. 
But when you allow him to get into you, you will walk down the road that's led by the light of God in those ways. You will no longer be on this wide, broad path that leads to destruction. You will have chosen the other road. You will take the other street. We'll know you by your fruit. Your fruit is going to be identified by the path you're walking and the fruit you're bearing. Does that make sense? All right. Awesome. All right. And I want to close this morning, ironically, not ironically, really cool of God. See, the whole Holy Spirit puts it all together. Cool. Body ministry. So I read this poem that Phil wrote this morning that he posted on Facebook. I'm like, I actually get it. Like, I understand that one. And there's only about three poems he's ever written that I understand. Because I am not gifted in the literature world. I don't, I'm not a big reader. Okay? I read little words. And so I'm like, I even get this. And he's like, you do? I'm like, yeah, I think it matches my message tonight. So I'm going to let Phil uh, read what he wrote. See all the righteous. Yeah, nice and loud. Can you turn facing them just because yeah. otherwise we can't hear? See all the righteous, what have you become? What twists and turns did you spin around on? When you came to the conclusion of right and wrong, did you forget where you came from? Now that you're free, did you truly escape? Now that you're flying, who is lifting your wings? Did you live upside down in a tree, out on the limb, black flags furled out over your body? Or is there a cloud obscuring your vision? leaving a vague notion of feeling, on occasion bumping into walls and flying for dear life in the opposite direction. Life has a freedom if you can listen to the winds of time that play through your mind. There are pieces of the picture that await to be seen beyond your six senses. The Spirit told me one night in a dream that every life in my life was sent to me, not by happenstance nor circumstance, but a revelation awaited to be unhidden. There were choices I didn't make. There were words yet to say. There were promises of love on pretense, and all excuses left me useless. But now I know your heart is a treasure, a story untold, a love tethered, a vision in a dream awaiting meaning, and these generalizations will give you no freedom. Still there is my next breath. What I will do with it depends solely on the love that was given. Yeah, awesome. wow. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's so way over my head. But I got I got some of it. I yeah, so that's awesome. I praise God for that. So I just want to challenge you and encourage you tonight. God has rescued us into a new life. We are dead to our old selves, alive in Christ. The world should be able to see which road we're walking on. And if you continue to stumble on the same things, I just encourage you, get off the road and get on the path that he's made. It is narrow. It is hard. But leave those other things aside. You will never regret it. You'll never be like, man, I wish I would have gone back to the where I came from. No, you won't. No, you won't. You have nothing to go back to. That person's dead. So you're living as a ghost. You do that. Amen? Thank you. All right. So I encourage you to um, invite uh, a friend to our movie night next month. And we have a lot coming up. Um, for those who uh, are interested in participating in the Susan G. Coleman Walk, that's this month, September 28th. It's a Sunday morning. Our team is the Cross Trainers, if you want to come walk with us. Um, and then October 7th is the movie. And either the next Tuesday or the Tuesday after that, Instead of service, we'll be having the hot dog dinner giveaway ministry time for all the people that come for the trick-or-treating. And so we'll be collecting for that, um, hot dogs, buns, and all that. You can see Callista for that um, event. We also have Project Homeless Connect coming up October 15th. If you are in need of basic services, housing, anything, I encourage you to uh, see me or Pastor Rob about getting pre-registered for that event that you can attend on that Wednesday, October 15th, and be hooked up with every social agency in the region. They'll be there that one day. Plus, you go home with a bag of groceries and hopefully a winter coat um, and some things. We're taking donations for that. Uh, last year, we handed out 100 coats, and we're looking at handing out 300 hygiene packs of shampoo, razors, soaps. Crazy, isn't it? That, that God blesses us, and we just have it. Like, 
So um, I think I have like six bars of soap in my car. Woohoo! I only need 294 more. So <laughs> God, multiply these loaves and fishes. Okay, so we have that coming up. So that's a lot going on, yeah. right? And so I just encourage you to um, uh, be in prayer about those things, all right? Yes, ma'am. Could I say on this um, right road and wrong road, I was tempted really strong this past week on a couple of different things. And both of them were like booted up, like uh, short, shorts. At one time in my life, I wore definitely Daisy Duke. And what I do with them, I uh, sew them into purses. And I was really tempted not to do this with a couple of my favorite pairs, which I've still hung on to. Well, today, matter of fact, I zipped them shut, you know, awesome. so it's a purse. And then my ex-husband got a hold of me this past week and um, thought we were going to be an item. And he found out real fast that we are not an item. And he was around me one day and had to go back where he was. But I, you know, the temptation, because we go back 13 and 14 years old, he's a year older than I. I mean, he's, we've always hung around with each other, have a daughter together, and et cetera. But he's been one of my strongest temptations through on and off throughout my life. And I told him the other day, look, this chapter is ended. You know, if we can be friends, I'll lift you up in prayer. But the book is closed. You know, and that's what I mean. In two strong ways, I was tempted. And wow. it was really awesome to hear the message tonight because it's like, I love you, Jesus. You know, amen to this message. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. amen. tragic death of some kind and he was only like 23 or 24 so uh, their family needs prayer it's very upsetting to them right now and that's uh, Kevin and Lynn Sullivan and then Megan and Brian any others hey. Prayer for my brother. You know, I want God to just come and touch him and do with him what he let him have a willing heart to receive or something. Eric's pretty sick. Okay. Um, Barb's family, Barb and her situation, okay. and um, just for Phil to come back to church for our Okay. A lot of going on, yeah. Um, my co workers daughter is in like middle school and she hasn't been to school in a week and she hasn't been able to keep anything down. Uh, they're checking her pancreas, they think that she might have pancreas, pancreas titus. Oh my. Um, so, uh, if we could pray that she can eat food yeah. and get better, and that'd be good, yeah. I think your Titus isn't good. Mm -hmm. yeah. My brother, uh, he had some devastating things happen over the weekend. And typically when that happens, he falls into depression, and that leads to a very nasty spiral for him. So just defense against that stuff. So. His name's Aaron, right? Mm -hmm. Debbie. Heather just left sick. Oh. And while she was in a car, Nick called. Natalie's got 101 temperatures, so she's not feeling good. I had a feeling that was coming. It went through our house this weekend. Yeah. I'm like, oops. 
We had Kids Church Friday. Yeah. Yeah, Kirsten. But my mom and papa can get home safely because they had a bunch of flooding. Oh, yeah, out that's there. great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, the back to school sicknesses are trying to hit everybody, even if you don't have back to school people. Somehow, just putting everybody back in the same buildings makes it all just fly around, right? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't it's, it's crazy this year, though. Like, at my school, we have scarlet fever going around oh. and strep throat and uh, the flu. And it's, we're not even that far in. Yeah, it's not even flu season. Mm -hmm. As if the devil needs a season. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, well, let's just pray. You going to be able to remember all those? God already knows. He already took care of them. So we're just going to say, like what he said. So I just thank you, God. We just thank you, Lord, that you move in your people. We thank you that you live in us. And so right now we just command the enemy, infirmity, sickness, depression, tragedy, mourning, and grief. Lord God, you are the comforter. You are the healer. You are our all-consuming power. And we just release the kingdom of heaven to every situation that's been mentioned here. We just release the very uh, love of God over every situation. For love never fails. And Lord God, you never fail. And Lord God, we just thank you that you love us. And we just thank you that you will continue to touch each person, Lord God. And in agreement this in this place with all of us gathered, we agree in prayer for these things to be as you say they are. Not what we see but what, what your word tells us. And we declare it on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, love you guys. Okay. I know.